It is an old and accredited tradition in the Highlands, that the Lamonts or Lamonts were the most ancient proprietors of Cowell, and that the Stuarts, McLaughlins, and Campbells obtained possession of their property in that district by marriage with daughters of the family. At an early period a very small part only of Cowell, was included in the sheriffdom of Upper Argyle, the remainder being comprehended in that of Perth. It may, therefore, be presumed that, on the conquest of Argyle by Alexander II, the Lord of Lower Cowell had submitted to the King, and obtained a crown charter. But, in little more than half a century after that event, we find the High Steward in possession of Lower Cowell, and the McLaughlins in possession of Strathlochlan. It appears, indeed, that, in 1242, Alexander the High Steward of Scotland, married Jean, the daughter of James, son of Angus McCrory, who is styled Lord of Butte, and, from the manuscript of 1450, we learn that, about the same period, Gilchrist MacLachlan married the daughter of Lachlan McCrory, from which it is probable that this Roderick or Rory was the third individual, who obtained a crown charter for Lower Cowell, and that by these intermarriages the property passed from his family into the hands of the Stuarts and the MacLachlans. The coincidence of these facts, with the tradition above mentioned, would seem also to indicate that Angus McCrory, was the ancestor of the Lamonds. After the marriage of the steward with the heiress of Lamond, the next of that race of whom many mention is made is Duncan McFurcher, and Lormanus, son of Malcolm, and grandson of the same Duncan, who appear to have granted to the monks of Paisley a charter of the lands of Kilmore, near Lochjilp, and also of the lands which they and their predecessors held at Kilmun. In the same year, Lormanus, the son of Malcolm, also granted a charter of the lands of Kilfinnan, which, in 1295, is confirmed by Malcolm, the son and heir of the late Lormanus. But in an instrument, or deed, dated in 1466, between the monastery of Paisley and John Lamond of Lamond, regarding the lands of Kilfinnan, it is expressly stated, that these lands had belonged to the ancestors of John Lamond, and hence, it is evident, that the Lormanus, mentioned in the previous deed, must have been one of the number, if not indeed the chief and founder of the family. From Lormanus, says Mr. Skeen, the clan appear to have taken the name of MacLeman or Lamond, having previously to this time borne the name of Makaraka, and Clan Vic Eraker. The connection of this clan with that of Dougal Craignish, is indicated by the same circumstances which point out the connection of other branches of the tribe, for whilst the Craignish family preserved its power it was followed by a great portion of the clan Vic Eraker, although it possessed no feudal right to their services. There is one peculiarity connected with the Lamonds, says Mr. Skeen, that although by no means a powerful clan, their genealogy can be proved by charters, at a time when most other Highland families are obliged to have recourse to tradition, and the genealogies of their ancient Senechies, but their antiquity could not protect the Lamonds, from the encroachments of the Campbells, by whom they were soon reduced to as small a portion of their original possessions in Lower Cowell as the other Argyleshire clans had been of theirs. The Lamonts were a clan of the same description as the McLaughlins, and, like the latter, they have, notwithstanding the encroachments of the Campbells, still retained a portion of their ancient possessions. The chief of this family is Lamond of Lamond. According to Nisbet, the clan Lamond were originally from Ireland, but whether they sprung from the Dalryadic colony, or from a still earlier race in Cowell, it is certain that they possessed, at a very early period, the superiority of the district. Their name continued to be the prevailing one till the middle of the 17th century. In June 1646, certain chiefs of the clan Campbell in the vicinity of Danoon Castle, determined upon obtaining the ascendancy, took advantage of the feuds and disorders of the period, to wage a war of extermination. Against the Lamonts the massacre of the latter by the Campbells, that year, formed one of the charges against the Marquis of Argyle in 1661, although he does not seem to have been any party to it. An interesting tradition is recorded of one of the lairds of Lamond, who had unfortunately killed, in a sudden quarrel, the son of MacGregor of Glenstray, taking refuge in the house of the latter, and claiming his protection, which was readily granted, he being ignorant that he was the slayer of his son. 
On being informed, McGregor escorted him in safety to his own people. When the McGregors were prescribed, and the aged chief of Glenstray had become a wanderer, Lamond hastened to protect him and his family, and received them into his house.